So good morning. My name is Brock Zevan. I'm a life coach, business coach, real estate agent, and dad. I'm let us dive into so today, today's topic. Um, today's topic to me, when I listened to it, it was from Ed Maya. And I I when I listen to topics, you might say, like, okay, Brock, how does this work inside your brain? My brain, first of all, is very unique. And When I listened to him, I was like, wow, I think there's more to this story to this. And so on my walk, I start thinking more and more of this. So I actually literally, no joke, I do take notes and because I don't want to miss anything of what goes on inside my head. And so, Chris, when I was going through this and I said, life is like a pinata, I started to break down the actual concept of a pinata and how that works when you purchase a pinata. So when you go, and I don't know if you ever, has anybody give me a thumbs up or you tell me if you've done this before, how many of you have gotten a pinata before and actually had it at a party or seen the whole pinata skit and see how that all goes into play? Anybody on here have seen this take place on a pinata? It's pretty entertaining. And then when uh, you relate it to life, only one person has seen a pinata. All right, guys, go to YouTube then and just double check it because it does, this really does happen. So, because it's very important to get the visual. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I see you now. So, Chastity, one of the things I've learned, and she's got uh, young kids, but when you have a pinata, what do we all do? We, we, sometimes we cause distractions and we spin them around, right? And we try to have them hit something and we blindfold them maybe, and they're just swinging at nothing, right? Now, remember these analogies, I want you to think about life. Because we line up to hit a goal, and the goal is to break this pinata open, so then that way, Claudia knows this, when that way we opens up and candy comes out. Success happens, right? So in this pinata, here we are in the real life all attaining a certain goal. We all have aspirations, I'm sure, to make money. We all have aspirations to live financially free. We all have aspirations to be able to have great relationships with our children, our colleagues, our significant others. All this opening of a pinata, right? We all have the same goal. So we're all trying to hit it. We all line up. Here you go. Spin you around. Distraction. Blindfold. Distraction. Good luck. Here you go. Try to hit this. That's what we do in life, right? We're trying to aim for something we can't even see and distractions all upon us because we don't even write down our goals. So we really don't know what we're aiming for. Just like in a child's purpose, when we go and we say line up and then you get a crack at it. Okay. We swing, we all get a hit. And if we don't do it, what happens? What happens? Do we, do we go back in line? We, and we do this again, right? Would you guys agree? So, Christian, what I, what I say to this in, this in this concept, after a while, what starts to take shape? How, how does this happen that we go in line, we do the same thing over and over again? Big Money Mike says it all the time. I'm doing the same thing over again. Greg says the same thing. I'm calling the same people. I'm doing my fizzbos. I'm going in my mundane life, and I do it over and over again. And now I want you to envision this pinata. Okay, I want you to envision this pinata. And what happens when it doesn't break? Amy, what happens when it doesn't break and we get to ourselves and, it, and it's like, well, maybe, maybe it, 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 they glued it on too much. Maybe, maybe something else takes place. Maybe they, they formed it too tight or they used too much glue and we start rearranging it. Right. After a few times, we take peeking out of the bottom of the blindfold. Yeah. Yeah, Christian. Absolutely. We start making, we try to make it easier. We start being like, this is too hard. We have to find easier ways to do this because we're not going to be successful or we're going to be here too long. How does that sound about our life? How does that sound like when when we can't open the pinata or we start using other methods, it's like, well, there's got to be an easier way. Call that the path of least resistance. Give me a thumbs up if you heard the path of least resistance. How many of you have heard that before? When things get a little tough, 
We do the path of least resistance. Charlie, would you agree that after a while, not only do we choose the path of least resistance, people start getting out of line. And, and, and people start saying, this isn't for me. This pinata of me swinging it every single day isn't for me. And I have to start saying, well, I think I'm just going to, I'm going to do something different. And then we start seeing, because is it true that when we're in a line and we talk to other people, i.e. right now the market is not doing very well, I can't sell my house, no traffic, and we start talking to other, hey, hey, hey Johnny, how, how many people did you get at your open house? How, how many people did, did you get coming through? Do you have any show? No, I don't have anything either. And we start talking about all the same thing because we all see it now. We all feel it. We're all looking at it. It's like, damn, we can't break this pinata open. And less and less people start happening. Right? And that's how life is to us. This pinata can't open. We get frustrated. But then there's always one person. There's always one or two that keep hitting it. And he keeps swinging at it. No matter what takes place, we keep swinging. No matter how tired we get, we keep swinging at it. In life, you need to keep swinging. In life, you need to keep hitting that damn thing because eventually we know. Eventually we know that will open up. That pinata will open up. And whatever is in there, it will eventually fall to the ground because we have those pinatas up in the air. It will fall down. And how many of us, those kids get so excited and they see that candy, right? Now, what happens? Visually, guys, think about this. The pinata breaks. The kids in the background who got tired of swinging at it are back over in the corner right and i see some of you some of you that's why i like video because i can see tonality i can see your face expressions it's like i know where he's going with this i know it because the one or two that stuck into it they're the ones that have to now fight everybody else because they came from the bench they came from the background and now they're trying to come and get the candy and now we got to fight again. And we're now going like, oh, my gosh, I'm the one that did it. I'm the one that knocked it down. And all of a sudden, it's like, I got to fight again. Are you kidding me? I got to fight for my candy? Because in life, wouldn't that be great? If we're the ones that knocked it down, the people on the bench aren't allowed to come in, and I get to have to all myself. Unfortunately, guys, that's not life. Life is not fair. I wish I could tell you it's fair. I wish it gets better when you get older. It's just more challenges come your way. The more successful you become, the more challenges you have. One of the things I listened to Steve Harvey about today, he said, success is not free. Success is not free. And if you think it is, and for those in Facebook world, if you think success is free, I got some bad news to tell you. There's a price to pay. And just like that pinata, there's a price to pay. But you know what? Those that keep on swinging, they know that there's another pinata and there's another opportunity. And there's more opportunities for us if we keep on swinging. So today, I encourage you to keep swinging, to keep fighting no matter what. Because at some point, that pinata is going to break. I was talking to Pamela this morning about my dual career that I, I, I'm, I'm finally agreeing that I'm in. And I got to fight really hard right now. When you're in a growing season, when you're in a dual career, trying to leave one area to go into. My, my, first, my first dual career was teaching in real estate and now real, real estate to be a life and business coach, to speak at a very high level. It's hard. And I got to swing like no other. And you get tired and do things over and over again. So when I saw the pinata and I, re I heard the story and then I heard about success isn't free, that's how, I, that's how I came up with this today.
because I think we're all in that category. I think we're all fighting every single day to swing into that pinata. And eventually it will open. And so I, I, I want to encourage you to keep swinging. It will happen. You will break it open. And the other great thing that instead of looking at it in a different way, when I see the, the Bradens, the Cassidy's, the Chris's, the Christians, the Pamela, I, when I, I'm talking to all of us, I can only see who's on here right now and all those in Facebook world. Okay. You got to look at it as opportunities and not problems. Because when I started to change my mindset, when I swing at that now and I get to open up all the candy, you know how my mindset goes now? I just gave all the people an opportunity to get candy. I didn't look at it as a problem anymore saying, oh my gosh, you guys are taking my candy. No, I helped you get candy. And there's always going to be candy in this world. And so help people. That's an opportunity. All right, guys, keep swinging. Now, it is 830. So what I decided to do on Tuesdays now, because I don't speak again until Fridays, because I'm really excited. We got Greg and Christian who lead our next couple of days. And Fridays, I'm, I'm going to be working on guests and doing different things on Fridays. So I thought Tuesdays could be a good opportunity for Stump the Chump. Tuesdays would be a really good opportunity for you to throw something at me. You could ask me about what I came through with my notes, how I listen to things, what I listen to. I literally am working hard on putting together in a very, very detailed, like my whole social media platform, my whole platform on owning the morning. We're putting together a lot of different things because I get a lot of questions from people saying, Brock, how do you do this? What does it look like? What are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. So that's part of my coaching. Got to put more information, more value out there. So Sandy, you're absolutely right. Just keep on swinging. Keep on swinging. Now, who's got something for me? Who's got a challenge? Amy just left the video. I saw her. She's all dressed up nicely. She's probably going to an appointment. Who's got something for me that they'd like for me to solve on an objection or try to stump me for these next three minutes? In Facebook world, you can put a chat in there. Facebook world is very quiet today. Had quite a few people on, but quiet today. Charlie, thank you for leading the pack. Who do we, who, who's got something for me? Amy's going to the dentist, cleaning it out. Well, I got one for you, man. All right. I got one that I've been trying to get out for about a week and a half or so. I've been hiding from me, Greg. I know. I know. That's all right. Um, so, but I, I want to say one thing about, I really like the analogy of the pinata. One thing that I would say is that, you know, the pinata is already full. The pinata already has something in there that we're going after. We know what's in there, right? It has candy, it has sweets. So that's why we, that's why we buy it. And that's, that's why we, we want to break it open because we already know what's on the inside. Unfortunately with life, we all, we, we don't know what's ahead. We don't always know when we open up that pinata, what's going to come out, even though as hard as we work. So that's, to me, it's like th the challenge is you have to keep, you have to actually put something inside of it, which is what your goals and objectives that you want to accomplish, because you're not, you're not already getting a pinata already full of everything because we know in our lives, it's not like that. So that's where, that's where the, the grinding comes in is because you have to put what it is that you want in there. That's it's not prepaid. So um the, the here so here's here's the stump the chump so i'm gonna go at this like you know i'm gonna use you as the example and this it probably will make some um the example i'm gonna use is, is probably something you're already dealing with so here's a situation you have a couple husband and they're they're going through a divorce and they have a property and there's a lot of obviously contentment not contentment but there's a lot of issues between the husband and the wife uh, they're now not living together and they have a property that they have to sell. And the husband wants to sell the property at one price and the wife, she's not too happy about the way that the husband is going to list that property or how it's going to happen because she wants to sell that property to a friend of hers, someone in her family, and she doesn't really care what it sells for because she's at odds with her husband. So the husband gets the agent and he lists the property and the wife or soon to be ex-wife who's going through, they're going through court. They're already in their, uh, their hearings. 
and she's upset and she's ranting and raving about that you listed this property with this broker and I didn't pick this broker and I don't have a say so and you're doing it. And he's like, well, I don't really care because you want to give it away and I'm not going to let you do it. So guess what happens? The judge, they go in front of the court and the judge says, well, you know what? I'm going to pick a broker for you and you guys are out of it. So my question is to you is that can a third party judge determine who's going to sell your property? Do they have the right to do that? Well, Greg, being that I'm going through a separation and a divorce, I have learned that a judge pretty much can do whatever they want. Um, in North, every state is different, but in North Carolina, that's what you go through. I mean, they could tell you literally any asset that you have, they can pick and choose for what it is. Now, when I deal with divorces, not only on a, a, a personal level or uh, a divorce of, um, and, and I say this, that I'm fortunate, I like, I talk to a lot of people because a lot of people know about my drinking. A lot of people know about my, my divorce and that separation. That's actually um, one of the uh, coaching that I'm getting ready to do is helping single dads and single moms go through this process because there is no book. I mean, there might be divorce for dummies. I don't know, mm, but probably. Um, <laughs> probably. Yeah. But th the judge can decide whatever you want. The judge can tell you who you have to use because you guys obviously in this case can't do it. When I deal with divorces, I try to find common ground. It's pretty obvious when you deal with the divorce. I even have divorce people. I have one sit on one side of the table and one sit at the other side of the table, just like they do in California when they sell homes. It's the fastest way to get to a result, having a mediator in the middle. And you go, what you do is you try to find the root of really what they both can agree on. She wants to get rid of the property, not because of she wants to really give it to a friend. She's just really pissed off at her husband. So in spite, this is the plan that she wants to go. He's upset because of the financial situation in reference to he wants to get the most money out of it. I guarantee you, if the judge says, hey, you both are going to equally get the same amount of money, or if you figure out the money factor and both are motivated by the financial piece, then you can go in that direction. And that's what I've done so far is I said, hey, how much money are you looking for? How much money are you looking for? What's your percentages that you want? Some of them do 90-10, some of them do 50-50, some of them do 100%. I really don't care what the percentages is. You just got to find out the motivation. If you want to go into that journey to be able to say, hey, I would like to be the broker to help them out with separations and divorces. Now, totally side item, I would just say to you guys and like a little bonus material, people do work with attorneys and they build relationships with attorneys who handle family divorce, become friends with them, go on Google, look up family divorces, ask them to take them out to lunch, because guess what, guys, there's a lot of business in family divorces. 52% of people get divorced. That means their assets have to get divided. We're not going to be an attorney but you can take opportunities to be able to sell these properties for them. I will warn you, just like Greg said, they are very challenging. And at any given point, if there is no court order for this judge, like this judge chose this person. So at this point, they have to move forward with it and they have to sell their home. But if you don't have a court order and you go sell your house and two days before closing, the husband pisses off his ex-wife or vice versa. And they say, hey, I don't want to sell. They can do that. Now, there's legal ramifications that are involved in it. They can do that. You need both parties to do it. And that's why you need to have an agreement in writing before you go to it. So that way you have some sort of foundation going into it because it is a little bit of challenge. But uh, to answer your question in a very long, lengthy way, which is a very good question, the judge can order and the judge can also order to tell you how much percentage each one of them are going to get. Like, trust me, I, I, I dealt with it. They can tell you, hey, because of your income or because of whatever it is, you are going to get this percentage. That's why you try not to go to court. Because when you go to court, if the judge is having a really bad day, guess what type of decision he can make? I mean, there is no, I, I've learned, there are no rules when you get into court. Okay. I mean, obviously there's legal rules, but 
you know, if the courts, if the judge is having a great day, wonderful. Is that a bad day? Well, guess what? So, no, that's really good because that was an exact, that was, a, that was a thing that was happening uh, about two weeks ago when I talked to this, this, uh, this withdrawn. And so then I called the court and because I'm like, well, who was, who was the broker? The judge picked the broker and how do you get on that list? So I, called, <laughs> right. I did, I called the court right after that. And I talked to, it was, it was Union County, North Carolina. And the, the clerk of the court, she was like basically denying that the, that the court had any role. And I'm like, I don't know what to tell you unless she was like, try, you know, was this, that's why I was trying to get from her, you know, is this a real process? But again, you know, the, the judge can do whatever he wants. And like the last thing you just said, if they, if neither one of them wants to accept an offer, then the judge can actually order the sale mm -hmm. and actually, and, and there's another issue going on with someone else right now that the, the court is actually taking over the entire property um, and they're basically going to auction the property off because the parties are reluctant to mm -hmm. settle on um, an offer. Yep. And it can get ugly. So good question. I appreciate it. Uh, Claudia has her hand up. So we'll go to Claudia real quickly here. Claudia, what do you have for us? Yeah, that's, that's, um, I was uh, listening what Greg was uh, asking for. And I have that on the tip of my tongue because I do have a client that is, um, well, she called me two weeks ago. We were talking a little bit and I find out that she's divorced. She wants to put the house on. Um, she wants to see if she can buy her own house, but the house is under both. The thing is that they cannot get together because he has a restriction order to be close to her. Um, and that is going to expire until April. She's in the middle of the situation of um, getting the divorce and everything. But um, I was trying to see what was the best way to approach them. She, she called me and she said, you can come this week and, you know, like at least in presentation, find out. Um, provide her the CMA and sit down with her. But I don't know um, if it's uh, too soon or she will wait. Uh, because in this situation, I can communicate, I can get a hold of him, right? She, she provide me his information as well. But if they cannot even talk, text, not even get closer at all. So I, I think it's, I don't know. I, I never had this situation before, so... Do you have any guidance or any advice? Yep. So when you deal with divorces real quick here, <clears throat> before we end, um, if you're new to real estate, stay far away from a divorce or bring in a coach or bring in somebody who's experienced. Um, as, as weird as this sounds, it also is actually better if you've been through a separation and divorce, just like when I go for my coaching client, like my coaching who I'm going to interview to be my coach. Like they have to have kids. It's the prerequisite. You have to have children in order for me to coach, um, not me to coach them, but for somebody to coach me, because when you have kids, you don't understand, like when you have to make challenging decisions, kids versus work, like you're going to choose your kids 99% of the time. So when they don't have children, they don't understand what that feels like. So it's very important. Whoever coaches me, they have children in the same case here, when you've been through a divorce you can relate to them and say, I've experienced this. In my experience, this takes place. So you can, as, as, as Zig Ziglar says, is the key thing to communicating is you have to identify with them. So I can identify with them when that takes place, when I have those conversations. So the, this, the next thing I would tell you when it comes time for divorces, um, don't ever do a meeting without both parties there. Because you will lose the deal instantaneously because when you pick somebody and go meet with the wife only, the husband will immediately think like, what did you say behind my back? I don't trust you. You're on her side. And you'll lose the deal instantaneously. So if you can't get in touch with both parties, don't meet. You want to call both. Hey, I'd like to have a meeting with both of you. I've worked with divorces before. If we can get to the dollar amount that you guys both would like to get to and resolve this amicably, would that interest you? So I just changed my script. Instead of saying, do you, if you feel absolutely confident and comfortable, I just try to change the script up, but don't ever meet with just one person. Um, and when I deal with separations for negotiations, 
all of them have to be on a conference line and everybody has to be on the phone together because if you try to do something with one without the other, they're going to think you're ganging up on them and that's the last, you'll, it won't go well. So um, great stuff. Great questions, guys. I definitely appreciate it. If you have more questions, feel free to put it on the uh, Zoom there. Uh, Facebook world, we have been a little bit, uh, we're a little behind the eight ball on this, but thank you so much for being on here, Facebook world. If you want to know more about what goes on in our team schedule and our Zoom, feel free to click on the link. Want to know more about my schedule and what that's all about and what we talk about. You got to be on Zoom and also as well as engaging in our video stuff. So Facebook world, thank you so much for being here. Join Greg tomorrow morning at 8.15. Team.